Okay, so that means I need to configure router four and the internet router. So I'll do router four first. Interface serial zero one zero. That's this interface. Now in the real world, you could use commands such as show CDP neighbors to verify neighbor connectivity if you're not sure how interfaces are connected and you wanna verify interface connectivity. So this is definitely the local interface connected to the internet router. So on that interface, interface serial 010, IP address 192.168.1. 117. First IP address and subnet is one more than the subnet address. And because this is a slash 30, the last IP address is simply the next IP address in that subnet. It's interface serial 020 IP address 192.168. We're in this subnet, so it would be 118. So 1118 slash 30 mask. So can we ping the other side? Yes, we can. And we can see that an OSPF neighbor relationship has been established. So back on router four, OSPF neighbor relationship is established. We've learned a default route via the internet router. So IP domain lookup, IP name server is gonna be Google ping cisco.com. We can ping cisco.com. Can we ping facebook.com? Yes, we can. So I've configured the WAN links and updated them per the new subnets that we have. The next step is to configure the subnet. So we need to use this subnet for this local area network. Now the way that you work out first host, last host broadcast is once again, first host is simply the next IP address after the subnet. So in binary, it would look like that. Host portion is set to zeros, except for the last bit, which is set to a one. But in decimal, it's simply add one to the network portion. The broadcast would be one less than the next subnet. So the next subnet is 80. So the broadcast would be 79. And to work out the broadcast portion, you fill the host portion with binary ones. And again, we can verify that we've done it right. 79, it looks like this in binary. So zero, one, zero, zero, followed by four ones. So that's correct. And then the last host in the subnet is one less than the broadcast address, so 78. And if you wanna work it out in binary, you set the host portion to binary ones, except for the last bit, which is set to zero. Host portion for subnet looks like that, filled with zeros. Broadcast is filled with ones. First host is filled with zeros, except for the last bit, which is set to one. A last host has it filled with ones, except for the last bit, which is set to zero. So the last IP address in this subnet, which we need to use on router four, is 79. So 192.168.1.79. So on the ethernet interface connecting to the switch, gigabit 000, IP address 192.168.1. And again, it should be 78. Subnet is a slash 28. So slash 28 equals eight plus eight plus eight plus one, two, three, four binary ones. So it's two, five, five, two, five, five, two, five, five. Four binary ones in an octet would look like that 
followed by four zeros, which gives us 240. So this is 240. If you want to verify it again, in our calculator, 240 looks like that. Switch needs to be configured with the second last IP address. I didn't do that here, but it's essentially one less than the last IP address. So the switch needs to be configured with 77. So conf t interface VLAN 1, IP address 192.168.1.77 slash 28. Can we ping 192.168.178? So can the switch ping the router? Let's make sure that I've done it right. So show IP interface brief. Switch should hopefully be able to ping itself. Can ping itself. Let's see if it can ping the router again. On the router, show IP interface brief. Can we ping ourselves? Can we ping the switch? Now notice this switch has some old configuration on it. So that may be causing problems. Sometimes in Packet Tracer, when you make changes, things break. You may have to restart Packet Tracer. Let's just make sure that I haven't done something dumb. That all looks right. That all looks right. Show CDP neighbor details. We can see the internet router. We can also see the switch with the correct IP address. The local port is this, port on the other side is that. On this side show CDP neighbors. We can see the router on gigabit 101. That looks good. Let's see if I've done something wrong. What I'm gonna do at this point is save Packet Tracer and start it up again and see if that solves the problem. Otherwise, I'll check if I made a mistake. Packet Tracer has booted up again. Here's the router. Router four. Show run just to confirm. This IP address 192.168.178 slash 240 is configured on the router. And on the switch, switch three, show run this IP address 192.168.177 slash 28 is configured on the switch. That's the second last IP address. So ping 192.168.177, switch can ping itself. Can it ping the router? Still having problems. I'm gonna remove this default gateway command change it, IP default gateway, 192.168.178. Let's see if that solves the problems. And it did. Now in the real world, that's not correct. In the real world, you don't need a default gateway to access a local device. But that's a problem in Packet Tracer. So the issue here was the switch wasn't working per a real switch. In the real world, you wouldn't have to do that. Even though the default gateway is wrong, because they're on the same subnet, 
they would still work. In other words, they'd still be able to ping each other. Can the switch now ping cisco.com? Now I've rebooted Packet Tracer, so it may take it a while to sort itself out. Packet Tracer is great, but it does sometimes do things that are not real world and sometimes has weird issues, but at least it gives us the ability to test things and to learn. Okay, so the switch can now ping cisco.com, so that's good. We have IP connectivity from the switch to the internet. We then need to configure the PCs with the first IP addresses in the subnet. So on the PC, fast ethernet zero interface, 192.168.1, IP address is gonna be 65, first IP address in the subnet, so 65. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.240. Default gateway is gonna be 192.168.178. DNS server is gonna be Google. So hopefully this PC should be able to ping cisco.com, which it can. And hopefully it should be able to browse to cisco.com, which it can. And what about facebook.com? It can also browse to facebook.com. So that works well. Next PC IP address is gonna be statically configured, 192.168.1. It's gonna be 66. Next IP address in the subnet, 255, Default gateway is gonna be 192.168.178. So can it ping cisco.com, spell that wrong. Can't find the domain name, let's just check that I configured the DNS, forgot to do that. So DNS needs to be configured. It can ping cisco.com. Can it get to cisco.com? Yes, it can. Can it get to facebook.com? Yes, it can. And then the last PC in that subnet needs a static IP address of 192.168.1.67.255.255.255.240. Default gateway is 192.168.178. DNS server is Google. We should be able to ping cisco.com, which we can. And hopefully at this point, we'll be able to browse to Cisco, which we can, and browse to facebook.com, which we can. So I've successfully completed this lab. I've taken the subnet and broken it up into as many subnets as possible, each having eight hosts per subnet. That's what we did there. Then I took the last subnet and subnetted it again and used these two subnets for the WAN links. Notice we still have these two subnets available and these two subnets available. So we've conserved IP addresses in our network rather than using a slash 26, which is very wasteful on a WAN link, we're using slash 30s on two WAN links and we've used one of the subnets for a site. And we've got more spare. So what we should do is subnet this one as well. So what you would do in the real world is make this a slash 30 and better utilize your IP addresses. But that's okay for this lab. I've completed this lab. How did you do? Were you able to complete the lab yourself? IP subnetting is really important for the CCNA exam. Make sure you understand how to use a variable length subnet masks like I've done here. Make sure that you understand how to subnet and how to allocate IP addresses to devices in subnets.